अरुणा करुणा तरंगताक्षी धृतपाशांगुश पुष्पाणचापिरावृता मयूख अहम विभाव Namaste and welcome to the next episode of our ongoing series. It's been going on for two, three years now already, so and we're only one tenth of the way through, so it'll be ongoing for a little while more. <laughs> anyway. This Nama, Nama 111, marks the end of the section describing Lalitambika's form, her subtle form, as Kundalini. So this Kundalini form begins from the Muladhara chakra. There'll be a section later on describing the chakras in detail. But for right now, I'm going to give the details on this Nama and then sort of summarize the whole section on Kundalini. Nama 111. Bisatantu Taniyasi. She is like the minute fiber of a lotus stalk. This is the last of the Namas that describe her subtlest form. She is like a young girl in the lower chakras. As she makes sound in the Muladhara chakra, gets dressed like a bride in the navel chakra, and proceeds to meet her spouse, Shiva, in Sahasrara. There are many references for this description. These descriptions ultimately point to the path of Kundalini, the inner canal of the spinal cord, which is extremely subtle and almost invisible. When Kundalini ascends through this middle canal without any blocks or deviations, she shines like a flash of lightning. So, Kundalini is generally misunderstood. <laughs> It's actually the life energy itself, it is the presence of the living entity, and it is exclusively. From the goddess, the mother. And that's why she's called the mother, because she gives the life to all that lives. That's the role of a mother. But <laughs> hers is on a universal scale. So just see her power and her influence, because she can give life and she can also take it away. And this world is known as the world of impermanence, the world of birth and death. And that's because this is just her play. So she doesn't really take it seriously because she could disappear this whole universe in a heartbeat and then recreate it in the next without missing a beat. She is being. Itself. And of course, from the very beginning of this channel, we have talked about being and becoming as fundamental. Being because we have to deal with what is, not our theories about what we would like to be, or not our mistaken ideas, you know, such as in science, reductionism, and so forth. But what really is, how the universe really comes into being and how it functions, and that is through the agency of Shakti, the power. So her subtle form, Kundalini, travels up and down the Sushumna, which is the middle pathway, the spinal pathway, which is a very tiny, like the filament of a lotus stem. If you pick a lotus out of the water, And you take apart its stem, you find it's made of very fine filaments, like almost like a human hair. 
So in the same way, these very fine nerves, the Ida on the left, the Pingala on the right, and the Sushumna in the middle, conduct the life energy from the Muladhara chakra at the base of the spine to the Sahasrara at the top. And this is the whole scope and meaning of what it is to be alive. Since Kundalini has such immense potency, she confers on the sadhaka certain siddhis before reaching the crown chakra. If the sadhaka misuses such powers, he will not be able to realize Brahman and also gets punished. Though she has the burning desire to conjoin her spouse, she certainly knows how her power has been utilized by the sadhaka during her sojourn in various chakras of the sadhaka. She never forgets the duties allotted to her by Shiva. Possibly the Vach Devis used two namas to emphasize both her minute form, this nama, and mahat or supreme form in Nama 109. As otherwise, there is no necessity for them to talk about anything else after describing her subtlest kundalini form in Nama 110. So the spiritual path is beset with numerous obstacles. We talked about the grantis or the knots in another series. And then there are also the apparent rewards uh, if one becomes fulfilled in karma yoga, there's a possibility of great wealth. But that's not the real purpose of karma yoga. The real purpose is to make you fit for bhakti yoga. And the same with bhakti, you can reach states of immense bliss. But that's not really <laughs> the purpose of bhakti yoga. The purpose of bhakti yoga is to make you fit for raja yoga or meditation. And similarly, in raja yoga, one can attain siddhis or supernatural powers, magical powers, reading minds, uh, apprehending objects from a distant place, and so on. So these are simply distractions because the real purpose of Raja Yoga is to realize sunyata or emptiness. And that prepares the way and bring one, brings one right to the doorstep of enlightenment, which is, of course, the Ajatavada, Turiya. So this Turiya is the actual aim of the whole yoga system. And this is when Shakti and Shiva unite in Sahasrara, because one loses contact with the whole manifested world and becomes absorbed in consciousness alone. This is the aim of the whole spiritual path. This is why we do so many exercises and yogas and pujas and studies and so on. So if we miss this and we get distracted by siddhis, then really we've missed the, the point of the whole path. So it's like, go back, Jack, do it again. And she will throw you into a lower state and you have to climb back again. We see this happen so often. And why is that? Because of greed. Because we have desires and we get caught up in those desires, especially when they seem to drop into our lap and we lose our detachment, we lose our sobriety. We become agitated, we become lusty and we run after these rewards but the only result is that we delay our progress to the ultimate state. Narayana Sutta describes Kundalini thus, the place for his meditation is the space in the heart, the heart which is comparable to an inverted lotus bud. It should be known that the heart, which is located just at the distance of a finger span below the Adam's apple and above the navel, 
is the great abode of the universe. Like the bud of a lotus, suspended in an inverted position, is the heart surrounded by arteries. In it or near it, there is a narrow space, sushumna. In it, everything is supported. In the middle of that remains the non-decaying, all-knowing, multi-faced great fire, which has flames on every side, which enjoys the food presented before it, which remains assimilating food consumed and which warms its own body from the insole to the crown. In the center of that fire, which permeates the whole body, there abides a tongue of fire of the color of shining gold, which is the topmost among the subtle, which is dazzling like a flash of lightning that appears in the middle of a rain-bearing cloud, which is as slender as the awn of paddy grain and which serves as a comparison to illustrate subtlety. So here in the Narayana Sukta, which is a famous prayer from the Vedas, the subtlety of Kundalini is described and also her power. She permeates the entire body as the life force. She is the organizing principle of the body and that keeps the whole body functioning as a unit. Otherwise, the cells could just go off and do their own thing. But because they're permeated by the prana, the kundalini, they stay together, they remain organized as a living being. And of course, at the time of death, this prana is withdrawn. The fire starts to go out. One can no longer digest food. I remember one old sannyasi said to me, he was in his 80s, and he said, I, I can't digest even water. <laughs> Well, of course, water is going to put the fire out. So in one's old age, one has to take food that uh, feeds this fire, that enhances it. And I'm not going to tell it here, but I once cured myself of heart disease by taking very, very hot chili peppers. <laughs> so the fire of Kundalini is the life force. And she spreads from the shashumna through the heart to the whole rest of the body, through the blood and the lymph, like that. So we can understand that she is the power of life. She is the gift of being. And she is the power of becoming because she follows her own rules, her own laws of cause and effect. Even though she, her main desire is to unite with Shiva in Sahasrara, still, she doesn't tolerate any deviation from the path of purity. The path of purity is defined not by some arbitrary external moral standard, by, by purity of purpose, if one's actions are all motivated by the desire for self-realization and done in a spirit of detachment, then they, they get her approval, even though they may be very unorthodox. <laughs> so, in conclusion, possibly this nama could also mean the chitrini nadi, which is the central canal of the spinal cord through which Kundalini ascends and descends. With this nama, the description of her Kundalini form ends, and from the next nama, the description of her blessings begins. So, just to sum up, the Kundalini form is the most subtle form of the goddess. The life energy is the most subtle energy. And this is why the scientists will never understand it. <laughs> they can't dissect it. It's absolute. It has no parts, no boundaries. It permeates the entire body. It's not located in any one place. And yet, that energy throughout the entire body is one. This is the great mystery of life, which can never be solved by uh, scientific investigation. It can only be known if 
the mother reveals it. And that happens when she becomes pleased by our service and our love. So we strongly encourage everyone not just to hear these videos or read the commentary and the namas, which is linked in the video description, but also to do the practices, chant the mantras, do the pujas. We have so many examples of nice Shakti pujas on this channel. So please follow them and make your life perfect by satisfying her with bhakti. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.